If the city of Bani was already famous as the center of the early Urartu civilization and as the site of the world's largest soda lake, it has recently attracted the interest of the world as the origin of the only breed of domestic cat that will swim of its own free will, the Ban cat. In early times, the Ban region was settled by the Harites and the Urartu. Then, in turn, the Medes, Persians, Armenians, Byzantines, Arabs, Seljuks, and Ottomans. Now, it is in the east of the Republic of Turkey. In the center of the Ban region is Lake Van, which has some of the characteristics of a small sea. And about three miles from the eastern shore, is the modern city and provincial capital of Van. In early times its name was Tushpa. It was the capital of the Urartu people and the name meant country of the sun. Van attracts tourists with its ancient ruins but it now has another focus of attention for tourists, Ban Cats. Owing to this interest, the Ban Cat has now become a sort of mascot for the shops selling souvenirs and carpets for tourists. But apart from a few carpet shops, these days it's difficult to see Ban Cats in Ban itself. Yet once, nearly every street, garden and house in Van was full of these cats.
cats weren't kept by the people of Van merely as ornaments or as mousers, but as friends and members of the family. How I miss her, I swear. I've got her picture with me now. As I think of it now, I ache inside for that animal. If only I hadn't gone and left her behind here. We went to Izmir, we emigrated. Now I wonder where she is, where they took her. Is she dead? Or what's become of her? Now I miss her constantly, like I miss a child. This culture, however, is slowly dying out. In the face of steadily growing demand from tourists, both from within Turkey and from abroad, Van cats have started being taken out of Van by various routes. This one's been with us for years, and twice a year she gives birth. Twice she's had kittens with eyes of different colors, but they took them away, stole them. Once they took them to heaven knows which hotel and sold them to the tourists for three or four dollars a piece. Demand is particularly strong for cats with eyes of different colors, that is one eye one color and the other eye another color. And this has gradually turned these beautiful animals into objects of trade. Now I'll get rid of any of her kittens that haven't got different colored eyes. She's had kittens all over the place and we've given them to our friends and relatives. But if they haven't got eyes of different colors, I won't keep them. Now this one's getting old. If she doesn't have kittens with different colors, I'll get rid of her. Good riddance, she's old anyway. I don't think she'll have kittens anymore. I may give her to the vet. Heaven knows whether I'll keep her. The opening up of the economy to the outside world, the steady urbanization which has led families to move from small detached houses with gardens to city flats and the social changes accompanying these phenomena, have meant that families are no longer keeping cats as they used to. Add to this the exodus of cats in the hands of tourists, both from within Turkey and from abroad, the increase in road traffic and in cats being killed by cars, the theft of some cats by dishonest dealers, and the giving away of other cats to friends and relatives. For all these reasons, the number of Van cats, at least in Van, has been drastically reduced. All my education was in Ankara, and I met my first Angora cat when I was still at primary school. It was a big, long-haired cat, and its eyes were different colors. Much later, I was employed at one university, and I stayed there for six years. During that time, I saw many long-haired white cats with eyes of different colors, and I realized that they were just peculiar to Ankara. In the literature, it's claimed that the Angora, or Ankara, cat is the ancestor of all long-haired white cats, and that the Van cat, which much resembles it, is therefore simply a variety of Angora cat. At the moment we are in Izmir Zoo, but in Turkey when you talk about white cats, the cities of Ankara and one spring to mind. Of course the people of one will always claim it's a one cat, and the people of Ankara will always say it's an Angora cat, but which is correct? Before we tackle this question, it would be a good idea to talk about where cats were first tamed and how they spread around the world. It has been claimed that cats were first tamed under the Egyptian pharaohs, and that they spread throughout the world from Egypt. From remains which have been unearthed, we see that some of them went via the Middle East to Anatolia, that is present-day Turkey, and from there to Europe, while some went south of the Caspian Sea to Persia, or modern Iran. From Persia, they traveled to Central Asia, with one group branching of south to Arabian Peninsula. The last branch of migration went through North Africa and across the Straits of Gibraltar to Europe.
When we get to Anatolia, we find the migration going westward to Rouen and later Ankara towards Europe and also the emergence of albinism in one and the appearance of white cats. It is said that this was seen in Ankara only later with the appearance of Angora cats. But we know that albinism has a frequency in populations of only one in 10,000. That is, this might have happened not in Ankara, but in other cities like Samsun or Istanbul. In particular, we see these albino cats here in Izmir. They are said to have come from the east. There are plenty of them here in the zoo. They've adapted well and they're perfectly happy. Again, historical documents show that one is a very old settlement. It has been settled by the Hurites, the Urartu, the Seljuks, the Armenians and the Ottomans and is now inside the border of the Turkish Republic. If we compare it with Ankara, we see it has a much longer history. In addition, there must have been a wave of migration from the east and one towards the west and Ankara. But in contrast, our studies have never shown anyone taking Angora cats from Ankara to one. When we talk about one cat, we we mean cats from the whole of the lake one basin. For we see one cats even in the remotest towns. For this reason, we think that the first appearance was in one, and only later in Ankara. But there might be another explanation, since albinism appears in populations at a rate of one in ten thousand. It may have arisen independently in one and in Ankara. In that case, we can talk about both one cats and Ankara. And we can interpret each as being a separate group of albino cats. Bazı yabancı literatürlerde van kedisi olarak anında in some foreign literature, we find claims that true one cats have yellow patches on their foreheads and tails. But our studies show that this feature is not seen in purebred cats. That is, a color present in the genes of the father or somewhere in the family comes to the fore and spreads securely among the kittens. But we don't believe this is a feature belonging to one cat. Studies around the Van region show that the people there regard the typical Van cat as being not only white, but also long-haired. She wasn't just long hair, her tail was also bushy like a fox's and her legs. But a one cat's wife, short-haired ones are purebred. Either the mother or the father may be a one cat by their half-breeds. I mean, they aren't purebred one cats. But these days, there are considered to be two breeds of man cats, long-haired and short-haired.
results of a study conducted by Van University in the Van region show that 42% of Van cats have short, velvety fur, while 58% have long, silky fur. The long-haired ones are better. Our cat's long-haired. She mows twice a year. When she's molting, her hair is short, but at other times it's long. It gets especially long in winter. Winter is the coldest time, so she's long-haired in winter. It is popularly believed that only Van cats have eyes of different colors, whereas actually this phenomenon is also widespread among Angora cats. In fact, it's even said to occur among some black or spotted cats. In Van cats, both eyes might equally well be blue or yellow. In fact, as a rule, two eyes of the same color are more widespread than two eyes of different colors. However, because people trying to buy van cats prefer different colored eyes, the impression has been created that eyes of different colors are more widespread, and even that van cats are all like that, which is not true. According to studies which we have carried out in both one and Angora cats, one can find both eyes blue. Both eyes yellow or both eyes are different colors. Where one eye left or right, it doesn't matter, is blue, while the other is yellow. Our data show eye color to be formed thus. In general, the cat's eyes are yellow. But sometimes there is a lack of yellow pigment and we can see small dots of red. If there are enough of three red dots, the overall effect is the color popularly called amber. In contrast to this, we all know from painting that if there are dots of blue on a yellow base, we gradually get green and bluish green. This is the case in both one and Angora cats. In fact, even in black animals, we sometimes see this bluish green. If we speed up the increase in blue and lose the yellow pigment, we arrive at blue eyes. If this happens in both eyes, when we see a blue-eyed cat, but if this reaction only occurs in one eye while the other remains yellow or green, then we have the situation with Turks refer as a tekkes or one-eyed. Tekkes or one-eyed, a word which we can't translate into any other language because it doesn't mean having only one eye, but having each eye a different color. So we suggest that the word tekkes enter other languages too. The Van cat which is known by the people of the Van region by the name Pishik, has a triangular but rounded face. Its ears are erect and of medium size, and the insides are covered in hair. Its nose, mouth, and the bottoms of its paws, like the insides of its ears, are pink. The long-haired variety has a magnificent bushy tail, like a fox's brush. The body of a van cat is long, tough and muscular, well able to withstand the effects of a cold climate. The other cats, the Angara cats, are more cuddly and they're lighter as if one puff would blow them away. Their hair's fine and their bones are fine too. But these cats are very athletic. Atletic. Neden kızdın çocuğum? Neden kızdın? 
Their eyes are usually of different colors, and the majority of wild cats are long haired. But they've got a very special character. That's what uh, sets them aside. They're famous for their character because they are just like people the way they listen and understand. They may not be able to speak, but they listen. If you say don't do that or sit in your corner, they listen just like people. I don't know if it's intuition, but she understands everything I say extremely well. When we say, come on, Yamosh, it's time for bed, she goes straight to her basket and lies down. Or in the morning when I say, I'm going for a walk, come on, she's always right behind me. She is never afraid. She is very brave. And if you treat her well, she is lovely and gentle. But if she is treated badly, she'll repay it threefold. She'll always do whatever she sets her mind to do. Because she likes going out in the street, morning is her going out time. If you don't let her out, she'll tear the place apart. You can't stop her. In the end, you have to open the door and let her out. Whatever he wants to do, he does. If he wants to be stroked, he'll do everything he can to get his way. If he wants peace and quiet, he'll go to wherever he can lie down in peace. They do whatever they set their minds to do. He is very different, at least from what I can see. In the first place, other cats will come up to you, rub up against you, and pardon the expression, get on your week by intruding on you, but not a one. When he is hungry, or if he wants you to do something, whoever at home will call out to them and make it plain by his behavior till they do it. He doesn't come up to you looking for love. I think the biggest difference is that a one cat doesn't want to do things according to your wishes, only according to his wishes. When you want to stroke him, you can't. When he feels like being stroked, you can. When they feel loved, they always return it. If they want to be stroked and you don't do it immediately, they'll try every trick in the book and in the end, they'll have their way. I mean, they get round you. They're very crafty. In our blog, you can say she's managed to get even people who aren't cat lovers to love her. Just by mewing quietly, she can get into every door and after visiting their flats, she goes out again. But my neighbors tell me that even if they give her food, she doesn't eat it. And she never tries to steal food from the kitchen nor anything else. She just goes into everyone's home just to say hello. And I think she says hello. One gets dog still. You know, other cats can be trained, but that's something else. With one cat, not stealing is something, is something nature. They just don't. But whether they would if they were starving, I don't know. We've got chickens, you know, baby birds, but she's so tame, she can lie down among them and she won't lay a finger on even one of them. When she goes in the kitchen, she sees meat, milk and yogurt, but she doesn't touch any of them. When you give her food, she eats it. When you don't give it, she doesn't. None of them still. Put meat in front of them, they won't take it. They like grass and greens. There is none can beat them for cleanliness. They don't make a mess or piddle in the house. She used to come in from outside and I'd say, Dilan, your pubs are muddy. You've got them muddy again. Don't come in the house, darling. And she'd go straight back to the door. And there, I swear it, she'd wipe her pubs like a person. Then she'd start to lick them. Come on, Dylan, I'd say, don't forget your back paws. And she'd lick them nicely, too. Then she'd come in. She'd stop. 
like a person and look me in the eye. Okay, I said, jump up, you can sit there. At night, when she'd want to go out, she'd lick my face. And if I didn't seem to have woken up, she'd go to the door and hang on the door handle. She'd manage to open it and go outside. I mean, I've never seen another cat like my one. When it came to toilet training, one thing about my one cat was that I only needed to show him once. It didn't need a second time. He never did it anywhere else again. I had other cats. I had a black cat and a tabby. I really like cats, but none of them anything like a one cat. They are different the way they behave well and don't make a mess and the way they don't eat everything up. Other cats even eat refuse. Dilan wouldn't eat it. She'd smell it and go away. One cats can be very spoiled. It really is harder to look after them than other cats. They don't like every sort of food, then they want attention, and they are jealous and very intelligent. She wouldn't eat again out of the bowl she'd had breakfast in. She'd only eat when you'd gone and washed the bowl and put in fresh food. She'd never eat the mornings left over in the evening. The bowl had to be washed again. From what I've seen, these cats are different. They are fond of freedom. They are close to nature. They really aren't that tame yet. And even if they've grown up in Ankara, when you let them go free in summer, they can adapt straight away to that free environment. They're like normal cats, um, cats that have grown up outside, the way they defend their territory and often beat the other cats. They're still much closer to nature than other cats. One day I took the cat to my aunt's house and we started playing games. When evening came, my aunt said, come on, you'll be late, off you go. Uh, well, I went home and mom said, uh, where's the cat? So I said, I swear she's still at my auntie's. Let her stay there and tomorrow I'll go and get her. Well, about 11 o'clock that night I listened and there was a noise at the door, a meowing. 
So I opened the door and I looked, and there was Dylan at the door. Now from one to Edremit, it's 13 miles and so, and she'd come all the way. She was stolen, oh God knows how many times. They snatched her, but she always escaped and came back. No one was able to take her away from us. They are very proud, and they are very clean. In addition, if we are at all hard on them, they get annoyed and they can sob. For that reason, we are very careful. One day Dilan jumped up and sat on our daughter-in-law's cushion. Dilan, she shouted, get down, don't go there. Well, when she shouted like that, Dilan went off in a sulk and didn't come home for two days. Sometimes when I didn't like something she did, I got angry, but she'd get upset and sulk. When we took her on our laps, she tried to escape. I really had to try hard before I could make up with her. Then I saw how sensitive she was. She'd get upset and curl up and sit in a corner in that respect. And also because she was deaf, there were some things she didn't understand. Yes, deafness is found in Ban cats as well as Angora cats. But research has shown that in Ban cats the incidence is very low, only about 5%. According to people from Van, the thing that marks a Van cat from all others is its good behavior. That is, its refusal to steal, its pride and its cleanliness. But according to world cat literature, the thing that marks a Van cat from all others is the fact that it's the only breed of domestic cat that will swim of its own free will. One characteristic of cats is that they don't like water. That is the fact that cats don't enter water and swim. We thought it would be the same with one cat. But our observations have shown, especially at the same time, the spring feast, the 6th of May, one families go down to the lake's edge with their children and their cats. And while they're taking all the food out for their picnic, that's when some one cat slowly go down to the water's edge and put their paws in the water. Then take them out and lick them to taste the water. Then they go into lake one, swim around in a big arc then come back to the land and shake themselves and lick themselves dry. We haven't been able to film this yet, but that's what our observations have shown. We mentioned this characteristic to some visiting scientists, and there was one Japanese zoologist. We told it to him, and he put forward the theory. Perhaps at the edge of Lake Swan, when there were some young fry and certain fish, the pearl mullet, and might the cats have gone into the water to catch those baby fish, but we answered that there were almost no fish at the place where we saw this, and that it was impossible for the baby pearl mullet to have come to that strip of shore. Pearl mullet-like places where fish water flows into the lake. Secondly, the cats weren't forced to do this, and anyway, they don't go into fresh water. That is, they don't go in the fresh water of the big rivers that flow into Lake One. After they tasted the slightly bitter soda tasting water peculiar to Lake One, they went in. And we interpreted this as a characteristic of cats living in one. But we did put forward this counter proposal if we took an Angora cat living in Ankara and brought it to the edge of Lake One under the same conditions, will the two go into the lake? I don't know. But we decided it was correct to describe going into the water and swimming as a characteristic of one cat. Well, it may have been established that Van cats don't willingly go into fresh water like rivers, but only into Lake Van, perhaps because they like the soda in the water. But we're going to show you a memory from childhood that conflicts with this and shows that Van cats can also go into fresh water. Yeah. 
Van'ın Şamran kanalı diye bir yer var. Orada her gençler 13-14 yaşlarında, 15 yaşlarında yüzmeye gider. There is a place in Van called the Şamran Canal. And young boys of 13-14 or 15 go there to swim. And at that time I couldn't leave the cat. So I would take her with me. In fact, uh, one day I left her on the bank. You know, I was worried she might drown. So I was going to pick her up again after I'd had a swim. I tripped off, jumped into the canal to swim, then looked behind me, and there was the cat. Oh no, I said, she must have fallen in. My foot must have caught her and she fell in behind me. Then I looked and she was swimming better than I was. I didn't know she could swim at all and she was swimming better than me. You mean the cat went in of her own accord? Yes, of course, of her own accord. I was afraid she would drown. I couldn't believe. When they are in water like all animals, cats can swim. But their fur slowly gets waterlogged and starts to weigh them down. So if they stay in the water for a long time, they get tired and sick. For this reason, cats usually don't like going into water at all and don't go in and swim of their own free will. However, Every cat is unique, and they love surprising people. Here's what an Angora cat owner has to say. One of the things that have most struck us about our cat is the fact that despite everything we know, to the contrary, he loves water. If anyone in the house is having a bath, the cat always goes into the bathroom and makes it plain that he wants to have a wash too. And he usually manages to do that. No matter how much you push him away, in the end, he always gets into the bath. My cats like it. These ones like water in a way that I never saw with my earlier cats. They love to jump in, especially if the bath's full of water, with or without foam. They all jump in, but most of all, Tarchan, the yellow one, likes it. When I turn on the tap, he likes to get underneath and have a wash. Of course, I haven't seen them swim, but they jump in, get out soaking wet, and jump in again. Those are three cats of no special breed who were born in the Black Sea region and live in Ankara. Now let's hear what owners of Ban cats in Ankara have to say about their cats' relationships with water. For example, she plays very interesting games with water. She doesn't enjoy having a bath very much. Bathing her is a bit difficult, but when the tap's running, she plays very nicely with water. His interest in water is really different. He sits on top of the washing machine when it's filling up with water. We open the lid so he can watch the water go in. Or if a tap's running in the bathroom, he comes and watches the running water. Um, or else he comes when we're having a bath. He doesn't like being washed, but he always finds water interesting. We hardly have any problems with bathing her. She only shows a reaction, like all children, when we are getting her ready for her bath. Then, when she is in water, there is no problem at all. She lets us wash her, and it's just fine. In the end, we decided to perform an experiment. We decided to take one of those cats that have become mascots for tourists in carpet shops and take it to Lake Ban. Its owners couldn't leave the shop, so they couldn't come with us. As we didn't expect it to go into the water of its own accord, there in a strange place among strange people, we took it into the water in our arms. As you see, it 
doesn't look very willing. One couldn't say it's very happy to go into the water, but it clearly isn't reacting very strongly either. in the Lake Van Basin, where once they teemed in every house and every garden, is much diminished. The one cat with its all white fleece can be long or short haired. of a long-haired one looks like a fox's brush. Although their eyes can be any color, intense demand for eyes of different colors means that's probably how you imagine bun cats to be. The van cat is still in tune with nature and is in many ways in a natural state. It's famous for not stealing, for being very proud and very clean, and for always doing what it sets its mind to do. These characteristics may to some extent be shared with other cats, but it's going into water and swimming of its own free will makes it unique.
My van camp probably has characteristics peculiar to the region. He's a very clever, clean creature. He's easy. I mean, there's no special difficulty about looking after him. We're going on holiday, and I can't entrust him to anyone. Our cat's going on holiday with us, and we'll all come back to van together. We're going to Ankara. So we leave the city of Ban, and we also leave behind us the city of Tushpa, country of the sun, Lake Ban, in some ways like a small sea, and this lake basin's most lovable inhabitant, the Van Cat. having only one eye, but having each eye a different color. So we suggest that the word take us enter other languages too. The Van cat, which is known by the people of the Van region by the name Pishik, has a triangular but rounded face. Its ears are erect and of medium size, and the insides are covered in hair. Its nose, mouth, and the bottoms of its paws, like the insides of its ears, are pink. The long-haired variety has a magnificent bushy tail, like a fox's brush. The body of a van cat is long, tough, and muscular, well able to withstand the effects of a cold climate. The other cats, the Angara cats, are more cuddly and they're lighter as if one puff would blow them away. Their hair's fine and their bones are fine too. But these cats are very athletic. Their eyes are usually of different colors and the majority of one cats are long -haired. But they've got a very special but it clearly isn't reacting very strongly either. in the Lake Van Basin, where once they teemed in every house and every garden, is much diminished.
One day I took the cat to my aunt's house and we started playing games. When evening came, my aunt said, come on, you'll be late, off you go. Uh, well, I went home and mom said, uh, All my education was in Ankara, and I met my first Angora cat when I was still at primary school. It was a big, long-haired cat, and its eyes were different colors. Much later, I was employed at one university, and I stayed there for six years. During that time, I saw many long-haired white cats with eyes of different colors, and I realized that they were just peculiar to Ankara. In the literature, it's claimed that the Angora, or Ankara, cat is the ancestor of all long-haired white cats, and that the Van cat, which much resembles it, is therefore simply a variety of Angora cat. At the moment we are in Izmir Zoo, but in Turkey when you talk about white cats, the cities of Ankara and one spring to mind. Of course the people of one will always claim it's a one cat, and the people of Ankara will always say it's an Angora cat, but which is correct? Before we tackle this question, it would be a good idea to talk about where cats were first tamed and how they spread around the world. It has been claimed that cats... Our cat's long hair. She moves twice a year. When she's molting, her hair is short, but at other times it's long. It gets especially long in winter. Winter is the coldest time, so she's long-haired in winter. It is popularly believed that only Van cats have eyes of different colors. Whereas actually this phenomenon is also widespread among Angora cats. In fact, it's even said to occur among some black or spotted cats. In one cats, both eyes might equally well be blue or yellow. In fact, as a rule, Two eyes of the same color are more widespread than two eyes of different colors. However, because people trying to buy van cats prefer different colored eyes, the impression has been created that eyes of different colors are more widespread, and even that van cats are all like that, which is not true. According to studies which we have carried out in both one and Angora cats, one can find both eyes blue, albino cats. In some foreign literature, we find claims that true one cats have yellow patches on their foreheads and tails. But our studies show that this feature is not seen in purebred cats. That is, a color present in the genes of the father or somewhere in the family comes to the fore and spreads securely among the kittens. But we don't believe this is a feature belonging to one cat. Studies around the Van region show that the people there regard the typical Van cat as being not only white, but also long-haired. She wasn't just long hair, her tail was also bushy like a fox's and her legs. But the one cat's white, short hair. Yes, deafness is found in Ban cats as well as Angora cats. But research has shown that in Ban cats the incidence is very low, only about 5%. A 
According to people from Van, the thing that marks a Van cat from all others is its good behavior. That is, its refusal to steal, its pride, and its cleanliness. But according to world cat literature, the thing that marks a Van cat from all others is the fact that it's the only breed of domestic cat that will swim of its own free will. One characteristic of cats is that they don't like water. That is the fact that cats don't enter water and swim. We thought it would be the same with one cat. But our observations have shown, especially at the same time, the spring feast, the 6th of May, one families go down to the lake's edge with their children and their cats. And while they're taking all the food out for their picnic, that's when some one cats slowly go down to the water's edge and put their paws in the water. Van cats weren't kept by the people of Van merely as ornaments or as mousers, but as friends and members of the family. How I miss her, I swear. I've got her picture with me now. As I think of it now, I ache inside for that animal. If only I hadn't gone and left her behind here. We went to Izmir, we emigrated. Now I wonder where she is, where they took her. Is she dead? Or what's become of her? Now I miss her constantly, like I miss a child. This culture, however, is slowly dying out. In the face of steadily growing demand from tourists, both from within Turkey and from abroad, Van cats have started being taken out of Van by various routes. This one's been with us for years, and twice a year she gives birth. Twice she has had kittens with eyes of different colors, but they took them away, stole them. Once they took them to heaven knows which hotel and sold them to the tourists for three or four dollars apiece. Cats don't steal. You know, other cats can be trained, but that's something else. With one cat, not stealing is something, is something nature. They just don't. But whether they would if they were starving, I don't know. We've got chickens, you know, baby birds, but she's so tame, she can lie down among them and she won't lay a finger on even one of them. 
When she goes in the kitchen, she sees meat, milk and yogurt, but she doesn't touch any of them. When you give her food, she eats it. When you don't give it, she doesn't. None of them still. Put meat in front of them. They won't take it. They like grass and green. There is none can beat them for cleanliness. They don't make a mess or fiddle in the house. She used to come in from outside and I'd say, Dilan, your pubs are muddy. You've got them muddy again. Don't come in. Studies around the Van region show that the people there regard the typical Van cat as being not only white, but also long-haired. She wasn't just long-haired. Her tail was also bushy like a fox's. And her legs. But a one cat's white, short haired ones are pure red. Either the mother or the father may be a one cat by their half breeds. I mean, they aren't pure red one cats. But these days, there are considered to be two breeds of man cats long haired and short haired. Like a person. Then she'd start to lick them. Come on, Dylan, I'd say. Don't forget your back paws. And she'd lick them nicely too. Then she'd come in. She stop, like a person, and look me in the eye. Okay, I said. Jump up. You can sit there. At night, when she'd want to go out, she'd lick my face. And if I didn't seem to have woken up, she'd go to the door and hang on the door handle. She'd manage to open it and go outside. I mean, I've never seen another cat like my one. When it came to toilet training, one thing about my one cat was that I only needed to show him once. It didn't need a second time. He never did it anywhere else again. I had other cats. I had a black cat and a tabby. I really like cats, but none of them's anything like a one cat. They are different the way they behave well and don't make a mess, and the way they don't eat everything up. Other cats even eat refuse. Dilan wouldn't eat it. She'd smell it and go away. 
One cats can be very spoiled. It really is harder to look after them than other cats. They don't like every sort of food, and they want attention, and they are jealous. and gentle. But if she is treated badly, she'll repay it threefold. She'll always do whatever she sets her mind to do, because she likes going out in the street, morning is her going out time. If you don't let her out, she'll tear the place apart, you can't stop her. In the end, you have to open the door and let her out. Whatever he wants to do, he does. If he wants to be stroked, he'll do everything he can to get his way. If he wants peace and quiet, he'll go to wherever he can lie down in peace. They do whatever they set their minds to do. He is very different, at least from what I can see. In the first place, other cats will come up to you, rub up against you, and pardon the expression, get on your week by intruding on you, but not a one. When he is hungry, or if he wants you to do something, whoever at home, he'll call out to them and make it plain by his behavior till they do it. He doesn't come up to you looking for love. I think the biggest difference is that a one cat doesn't want to do things according to your wishes, only according to his wishes. When you want to stroke him, you can't. When he feels like being stroked, 